screen. Hey, Mark, how you doing? What's up, Mark the Traveler? What's going on with you? I subscribed to your new channel today, by the way. I left you a comment, so you probably saw it, but if you didn't, I subscribed to your other channel earlier today. Hey, so, Mark. Looking forward to whatever you have planned for that channel. Trying to support other people just like people support us. Okay, all right. Well, how's it going today? Got any plans for Easter? Why did I have to come over to your house? I'll bring a cake. Who all gonna be there? <laughs> what did he say? <laughs> what? Yeah, man. He said what? Oh, so we gonna tell everybody that we ain't doing that now. Uh, I was like, damn it. <laughs> <laughs> you crazy. Oh, you don't celebrate holidays? Oh, my bad. I didn't know. Oh, sorry. You might, you might have told me before, but I could have just forgot. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. So, are you like um, a Jehovah Witness or something? Or you just don't celebrate holidays? Like, you didn't grow up celebrating them? Or or you just, you know, grew up and decided you didn't want to celebrate them? So, let me know to teach how. Because <laughs> I know a lot of people don't celebrate, you yeah. know, because of their religion or something. Buddhist. Oh, Buddhist. Okay, okay. I got you. I got you. I got gotcha. you. But yeah, I know a lot of, I knew friends who were uh, Jehovah Witnesses and they didn't celebrate and stuff. But my one friend, um, Chris, when she got older, she started celebrating with her kids. And she her mom didn't approve of it. But she was like, you know, I'm grown now. She still went to the uh, temple and everything. Oh, yeah. But, you know, certain holidays, she would have them celebrate. But, you know, to each his own. To each his own. I know what I said. I never played with nobody in their religion. Right. I tried to say the wrong thing. Yeah. And as I got older and I knew to, you know, to inquire about it or whatever. But I I, I just figured, you know, we all... We all got it. It's us to just do what's mm -hmm. best for you. Yeah, I just try not to fit nobody with their preferences and everything. But um, yeah, tonight um, we're gonna we were just trying to discuss uh. Oh oh, he's on. Oh, he switched his channel. I'm over here like, hold up, why his picture looks different? You hopped off one channel and logged into your other channel. <laughs> I'm up here like, hold up, who's this person that just popped on? That's still Mark. <laughs> but yeah, um, as you can see with the title of the video, the title of our live tonight, um, it is called How Much is Too Much When It Comes to Supporting Family or Friends. So that's what we're going to be discussing tonight um, when it comes to like family, friends, children, um, especially grown children. You know, how much is too much? when it comes to supporting family and friends. And the reason why I chose this topic for this video this week was because when I was at work um, last weekend, yeah, it was last weekend, I happened to walk <laughs> I happened to walk past a couple of ladies. It was like three ladies. And they were just having some chit-chat. You know how you be at work and you just chit-chatting and stuff. And they were talking about their kids. And one of the ladies was saying how she had let her son uh, move back home. And the other lady was kind of giving her a lot of grief because of the fact she was like, yeah, I let my son move back home. And, you know, right now I'm helping, you know, take care of him or helping him with his stuff until he, you know, gets on his feet and whoop, whoop, whoop. And the other lady was like, I mean, she was going in, like, mm -hmm. she was making it, she was acting like the lady just told her that she's been taking care of her grown kid for like the last 5, 10, 15, 20 years, and all he do is sit around the house holding himself and playing video games, you know, or <laughs> running in and out of her house 
being disrespectful or not, whatnot. She was like, that's how you spoil kids. When they gone, they gone. You don't supposed to be letting them keep coming back home. And, woo, 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 woo. <laughs> and I didn't say nothing. I just walked past because it was a heated conversation. I stayed out of it. <laughs> I stayed out of it. Hey, Mama Cislo. Mama Cislo said, hey, my sisters. How are you guys doing? Hey, how you doing? <laughs> <laughs> we are doing wonderful. Thanks for tuning in tonight, Mama Cislo. We were just um talking about how somebody that I work with was telling another lady, you know, just in, you know, chit chatter at work, saying that she had let her son move back in and how she was helping, you know, helping him support him until he get on his feet, get a job or whatnot. And that lady, the other lady was going off. That's that's why our that's why these black boys are spoiled. That's why we, we always enabling them and we always did it. And the lady was like, My son been out for a while and he needed to come back home you telling me i should have told my son that he can't come back home and the lady said that's what i would have told my son you better find mm -hmm. I'm, I'm, and I'm, I'm just walking past i'm just watching and listening and then <laughs> i just bust out laughing because i'm thinking like okay my son is 22 the oldest one and he's still living home and if I would have told her that, that lady probably would have tore me a new you-know-what because she was going in on that other co-worker of ours. And granted, my son works full-time. He goes to college. He helps around the house. He helps me, you know, with transportation needs for my other son, you know, and things like that. But I'm sure if I would have told her, my 22-year-old still said that how she probably would have went ham and is. How do you feel about that? Well... My son is 29, and he's still living home with me. But I don't see that he's living it. I see it as us living together because we we split, basically, we split everything. Mm -hmm. And some stuff, more, my son will pay or whatever. But I think that, like I told him, at any time that he wants to, I want him to. You know, it's his choice that he's still there with me. He's not there because... He thinks that I can't make it because I'm I can I can you know, but I think that if my son either one of us I have a twenty year old son too, and he moved out before he graduated from high school, but if he needed to come back with girlfriend and baby because he said she's gonna be his wife and he waiting but he's not she's not his wife yet, but if they needed to come back as a family regardless of where we are and who we live in and how we live in. If I'm living there, my kids is going to live there. Mm -hmm. You know, I teach my kids to, even if you stay in a weekend at somebody's house, pitch in and do something. Don't just be at these, at somebody's house and not do nothing. You know, help clean, bring food if you can or something. Don't think because, you know, you're there, even, even, even when we go out of town, you know, you go to the grocery store, you get items, even if they have toilet paper, tissue, or whatever. Things you know that you're going to use that they still going to need once you're gone. Mm -hmm. And I always try to leave like a gift for whoever hosts, I guess it's called host you or whatever while you're there. Most of the time people that I go visit, they always say, they want you to, they, they ask for you to come or we make a right for me to come back if they can't come here. But anyway, I think that It'd be a much easier way, even if it was a, if it was a, if it was your son, your daughter, brother, sister, whoever. I think it's easier if we step up and help each other. But don't get in somebody's house trying to live up them. Your goal should be: if I come and stay with so and so for a while, let me still, even if you know, contribute to the household, but also put money up as well as if they want to go out eat. Mm -hmm. Still buy. I mean, I know people still need things. Still, people, if you're a shopper. You want to shop still, but don't live with nobody and not contribute to the household, not saving for your own household soon because, like they say, too many grown-ups can't live in the same house, and I Amen. believe in that. That's true Especially to me. Especially women. <laughs> Especially I, women. Yes, I've seen all of that as a kid and even in my younger years as an adult. Mm -hmm. People... Always say, oh, yeah, you can live with me. Come on. And then, it's, you know, it's, it's, it doesn't matter if the person come live with whoever, if they have kids, if they don't have kids. But sometimes it's all, it's, if you do have children and you go live with somebody else with children, make sure those kids 
they don't have to be buddies and you know you can have a kidney type relationship but make sure they get along mm -hmm. if they years are together or apart yeah i see so much and when you leave just leave and i have to call the police and we fighting and then the kids into it because now you tell if you're living together and it's during school and you do have school age kids they go to school together especially if you're using the same address make it easy on everybody and yeah. just leave just leave yeah because a lot of people like when i um titled the video how much is too much uh, when it comes to supporting family and friends just not just letting you know deciding if you want to let your child move back home or um but like we were talking earlier how i remember times when i was younger and I remember times when I allowed people to come move in with me. People that, who didn't have nowhere to go. They lost their job. They got put out where they was. They broke up from their boyfriend. Had to move. You know, all kind of different scenarios. And I wouldn't say, okay. You know, okay. And they would always say, you know, it'll only be a couple of weeks. It'll only be a month. It'll only be, you know, till I get my next few paychecks or whatnot. And then it would go from... Like, one thing I don't like, okay, I didn't, I didn't done my share. <laughs> I think I have done my fair share of letting people live with me. You know, not any time in the recent years, but, you know, when I was a younger adult, even when I didn't have much, we might have been just living off of ramen noodles, hot dogs, peanut butter and jelly sandwiches, you know, um, but I'm like, I just felt compelled because there was times in my life when I needed someone to let me in, when I had, because I left home before I graduated high school, and I really didn't have nowhere to go, no money, no nothing. I had friends whose parents would let me live with them. I had um, my uh, godparents sometimes would let me live with them. I would stay, you know, wherever I could till I got on my feet, which took maybe, I don't know, probably a year or so after graduating high school, because I, I, even though I left home, in the middle of high school, <laughs> before I graduated, no matter where I lived, no matter where I laid my head that night, I always had my schoolwork. I had my book bag. I had my pencils and pens. I went to school every single day and graduated on time <laughs> in like the top 30 percentile of my class. So um, I didn't just drop out of school or nothing like that. Right. But I helped out. Like one time, I remember the first person who I lived with, um, she, her mother, she didn't even think twice when she was like, mom, Tanya, you know, she needs somewhere to stay, you know, she can't go home, you know, for whatever the reason was, I couldn't go home mm -hmm. and come to find out, I didn't realize how big her family was. They was deep and they had a small house. They all shared, like all the girls shared a bedroom. It was like, oh my God, I think she has three sisters and she got three brothers and then her mom it was like we were like nine nine deep up in that house and we all were sharing bunk beds and stuff but it was like her mom she said all i want you to do is just get a job somewhere like mcdonald's burger king you know and just pay you know just pay what you can pay to help out around the house and i did that willingly mm -hmm. and then i stayed with somebody else um and their family we was deep i mean deep like four or five girls in a king size bed <laughs> everywhere i stayed it was and that's why i say i felt compelled when i finally got my own place and started living by myself i felt compelled when people needed a place to stay because people yeah. let me stay with them when they didn't even have much we eating like beans and cornbread all the time or spaghetti and you know just meals that so stretch, stretch. Yeah, yeah like sometimes it'll be the same thing every week and i would like help out i would get a job at mcdonald's and i'll be like here I buy this, buy tissue, buy soap, buy, you know, I always helped out mm -hmm. wherever I was. I never just was a moocher. That's just yeah, never that's been what me. I'm talking about. Just, yeah, or, or like, some people, like me, I try to... I I hear that mama says slow, so you know where I'm coming from, mama mm -hmm. says slow. But I understand what she said. She done done. Mm -hmm. And I don't blame you because you know one thing I say is, if you let somebody stay with you... And then when they leave, I would just, I mean, that's probably the perfect world that I'm thinking of, which, you know. But what 
I think is if somebody open a house up to anybody, when you leave, just go. And I know that's not often that it can happen that way, but when it can, make it the best out of it as you can. And just don't talk out of that person's house. You know, things might have went on. Or you something might have get into it or something? Well, like, I know people that have lived with other people, and when they leave, they come to you, and they say, oh, when I was living with such and such, they partied every night, and oh. they did this. <laughs> Telling you like they business. Okay. Yeah, don't, don't leave what, like what they say, what happened in Vegas stays in Vegas. Yeah, what Let's happened in that, that person's house stays in that person's house. I yeah. feel you, I feel you. But then they, they afraid to face you or face that person or whatever because, you know, you want to, like, if somebody living with this person, or a, person A, living with per, person A or whatever, how you want to say it, when they leave and they may go live with person B, then they leave there, they go for the person C. Okay, now you A know about B and C, but that don't leave them to open up the door to go over and tell D now that you need somewhere else to live. Don't do a person like that. If mm-hmm. I go and live with somebody, God, say the same thing, I don't have to, and I thank God for where I do, God, you know, but I'm going to ask him to, mm-mm, don't let me be the one that, I don't want to be, I don't want to do that to nobody. Right. Because for one, Nice have said if I ever let anybody when I get a position and if I can and I let somebody come live with me, I I don't normally I'll I'll let you come there for free. I'll give because you two or three months. Because you want them to save yeah. up and move out, but a lot of people don't do that. <laughs> they, you be yeah, like save that's the up real and move world. out that's so what you I'm can saying. hurry up and get in, get out, get your deposit, your lights, your gas. You know, have money for a moving truck, all that stuff. But some people take advantage of you. They move in, and they be out there, okay, we might be, like, not really tight on money, maybe not poor, but we have, like, a budget. We might go out once a week or Mm -hmm. on paydays or, you know, something like that. Then you got somebody who move in with you, and you be like, okay, you can stay here for a month or so, but you got to save up your money. Don't pay me nothing. Just take your money and save it up. And what they do? They they go out. They eat. (laughs) They eat, or they go. Or some, they got. They got somebody that they probably already asked if they can live with, and that person gave them a lie. Or some people bought up the flat. I give you a no, but this is my thing here, and I've seen this too. They'll go over and ask this person over here, "Can I live? With, you know, I need a place to stay for a little while." Ooh, this man. person may not have seen you say no. Or they give them a lot. So they come to you. You be like, oh yeah, you can stay here. I'm going to give you a month, three months or whatever. You don't have to pay me nothing. Just, you know, take your paychecks, get yourself together. And I understand if you go out to eat or do something. Yeah. Or even at the time, they may need a new pair of shoes in there that they want to get. But they always uh, shopping and flossing and coming home with bags of new clothes every week. They hair and nails and everything else is dead, but they ain't saving up no and money. And then they over, they over the person that told them no house, kicking it. And then not necessarily, I didn't necessarily talking about well alcohol, but they go over there buying food and doing everything. When they come to your house, they coming home with the Burger King cup or the Charleston's cup, wherever they went to that day. But at your house, they don't. They just They're not don't have bringing nothing. nothing for you, but they steadily eating up your food. Oh yeah, using your hot water, I don't have using your air and heat. Kind of <laughs> <laughs> you ever had somebody come to you? I, I be like, if, okay, and it took God to work on me because I used to be that type of person. Like, what <laughs> people would be like, yes, yeah, such and such, stand with me. Let me tell you, and I'd be like, oh, what they say. Ten, what they say, ten toes, all in that business. I'd be like, what? <laughs> they ate the, I had this, and we had that, and I came back home, and I had bought some leftovers from my mama's, and it was in the refrigerator, and I knew I was going to go in and eat that. I came home, and the container, or the, or the, or the paper plate on the counter, and... Mm-hmm. I just said, I know that in my, I know that if you open the refrigerator, they in there sleeping, then you want to, that's a, uh-uh. I have, mm-hmm. I have heard a story, 
Or, or when people live with you, they got a baby. Mm-hmm. Oh, I heard a horror story about somebody let somebody. You know, when we all get out of high school, we still in that. Oh, my, my sister, my bestie, my this, my that. Bestie and the baby come live with you. Yes, you yeah. can call in, Mark. <laughs> You don't want to talk to the best of the baby no more after that. Because <laughs> Pampers is the one to get you put out you somebody and your, else. You and your baby got to go. <laughs> <laughs> when they say, when they say, <laughs> throw the Pampers outside when you leave it and you get the smell of something in your house smell like it's dead. <laughs> uh-uh. Yep, Mark, you can call in. Is he, hold on, let me turn the phone up. What I need to be quiet. <laughs> I'm just like, okay, yeah, go ahead and call in. But yeah, I, um, I think though, cause you know, I know we all did that. I ain't gonna say we all know, but I, I, I remember saying, "Oh, we gonna live together, we friends." When we grow, yeah. oh my God, me and my cousin used to say that all the time. <laughs> hey, Mark. I thought I heard him. Oh. And the other one, she knows that is. Oh, oops. You calling in, Mark? Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hello? Why does it sound like I heard something? Is the speaker on? Hold on, is the theme turned on? Yep, it's on. <clears throat> Man, the one time I had to, uh, he's here calling now, I'm telling you. Okay. But yeah, um, if y'all want to call in and tell some stories about, you know, this topic, please feel free, whether you're telling a story of somebody helping you out or telling a story of you helping somebody else out or telling a story how you try to help somebody out and they did you dirty or, you know, anything that got to do with supporting family or friends or, you know, something good about it, something bad about it, you know, feel free to call in and tell us your story. Um, that's that's basically what our channel is about. Just interacting with people who have been through similar situations with us. Especially if you grew up in the hood. And that's why the show is called The Hood Table. Because both of us grew up in the hood. <laughs> so did. And so, ain't yeah. ashamed. Ain't ashamed of it. At all. Our, um... Valley High. <laughs> <laughs> our banner... <laughs> Our banner on our YouTube channel is one of the projects <laughs> where that both of us are really, really familiar with. Uh-huh. Hey, Mark. Hey, what's up? Hey. <laughs> How are you? I'm doing good. Hi, How Mark. <laughs> Hi. It's me and Samantha. What you got going for us today? Hi, Samantha. How are you? Good of you. Thank you. <laughs> I'm good. <laughs> So what's up? What's going on with you, Mark? Um, so I just kind of wanted to call in to um, kind of add my little two cents worth to the um, topic of discussion. Okay, go ahead. Um, so I um, I recently um, had someone who uh, who I'm a good friend with who I. Uh, recently stay in my um, a- apartment um, for uh, maybe a month or so mm-hmm. and I didn't have any problems none whatsoever mm-hmm. from um, one of my um, good close friends um, he paid me rent he, I didn't ask for it he offered to pay me rent he <laughs> yeah. helped, um, <laughs> um, with food in the house mm-hmm. Um, that's my type of roommate. Some of my bills, he helped me with my life bill. I didn't ask mm-hmm. or anything, mm-hmm. and um, you know, I, I didn't have this problem, like, um, um you know, unfortunately, uh, that's really good. That's, that's the kind good. of roommate that that's everybody what likes, about. yes, yeah. So, I never, I didn't have that problem from from um, my friend because my friend is a very responsible person. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, and just he was here for a month, got his own apartment, and you know okay. that's that. I mean, I didn't have any problems. Well, that's that's good. 
good. Hey, Miss Hogg. Miss Hogg just tuned in. Hey, lady. She says she can't stay long. Just stopping by for support. Thank you for stopping by and showing us some support. Thank you. We really appreciate that. And Mark, that is exactly the kind of person that anybody would love to have as a roommate. That's the kind of person who could stay with me if they ever needed to, if they ever needed to again in the future. Because mm -hmm. that's what we be talking about. Like, um, it's, pos it's positive ones that do mm -hmm. it, and it's yep. negative ones. But I'm I'm glad to hear your positive story. And just like I was gonna say, so I'm glad you did call in. That it's not always right. that it it comes out bad. That's why I would always say, mm -hmm. you know, it's God gives us all a, a different. Like we all got different personalities, mm -hmm. you know. So mm -hmm. everything, you know. If you do have to go live with somebody or they have to come live with you or whatever, I think that it's good that if you can get along, but also, like, most of the time, be able to also talk and come to, you know, like, if something is not what you think it should be or or they doing something or if they feel like you're doing something, even mm -hmm. though, like, when mm -hmm. people live in your house, you know, you want to be, you want them to be comfortable too. You know, come to me and say, you know, I work mornings where they may work nights. And, you know, when they sleeping, you probably up. But let me know, you know, and by me opening my door to you, I'm, it's not your home. Right, home, but, as long as, right, as long as you, like, show, like, hey, I want to do something to help you. Right. To show you my appreciation. And that's it, appreciation. Or whatever like that, that that's it. <laughs> And that's the kind of person that I am. Like, God forbid, um, when I move to uh, Fort um, Lauderdale next year, which I will be doing, mm -hmm. I've um, been going down there and looking at different neighborhoods and stuff like that. Um, oh, if I have to go live with one of my relatives, I'm going to offer to pay rent. Exactly. That's like the least. That's just a do. courtesy. And if even if it's just that's a courtesy. And, and that's to show your appreciation, right? Because you want people to not. I mean, you already like some people might say, "Oh, you're no burden. You're no burden. You're no burden." But technically speaking, the more people in your house, the more money you got to kick out of your own pocket. So if you're like right. staying with somebody, say you don't have a job, and you're not you're staying with somebody, mm -hmm. but you don't have a job right now. I know people who have, and I didn't have this happen to me, where they come and move in my house or somebody else's, and they don't have a job, but they're not trying to do anything around the house, not trying to wash the dishes while you're at work, not trying to take out the <laughs> trash, not try. I mean, yeah, just I, not trying yeah, to do anything. No, no. Like, you got to make I people feel I, like it's worth I it. I wouldn't do that if I, if I had to come, if, if, if I needed to move in with somebody, I was like, no, I will do the dishes, I will cook. Yes, yeah, something. I will do whatever I can to, hey, show my appreciation. Right. For one, <laughs> you didn't have to do that. Exactly. <laughs> and I'm not saying that, like, people can't go and have friends that they, but, you but know. But do something, like, show your, do something, like, show your appreciation. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Whatever, whatever you can do. Yeah. I totally agree. I and do agree with that. Like twenty dollars to the house, right? Even That's if it's something, fine. twenty dollars here, like, ten dollars here. Like here's twenty dollars for the house, right? And I it's know something. some. I know uh, I, it was such a certain situation I can recall of where somebody has said they didn't need to clean up anything because they're not hardly there. Uh, but they uh, was always no. there at night. They was always there no. when was trying to wash their butt after they ran the streets all day. They was there eating. They was there <laughs> sleeping. But they're not, because they don't be there right. all the time during the day. <laughs> all the time during the day. I'm not at home all the time during the day. I got a job. We'd we like to be, but we can't. Excuse I still got to do chores. You're not wanting to do anything for, for that household. That you're saying and that's not yours. That doesn't excuse it. Exactly. Exactly. You know what? Regardless if you're there, regardless if you're there day or night, mm -hmm. you're still living in that person's household. Yep. You need to contribute and do something. Yep. Yep. I, I remember. I don't what... care what it is. 
You right you about that. Help. Like even 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 that person said, "Oh, you're not burned. Don't worry about it. Mm-mm. Just 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 give them some money anyway." Yep. Yeah. Do something because Show you know what. Something. Don't you burn right. your bridges. Don't burn your bridges because you, you right never too. know when you might need you something again. You never know. Yep. Yeah. You never know. Yep. But yeah, your roommate, he a kudos to him. For real. Because that's the that's the kind of roommate I had tried doing the roommate thing for so many years, you know, from the time of like twenty to I wanna say maybe twenty to twenty six, twenty seven ish. Mm-hmm. That's when I was like, eh. <laughs> it, it's not working out. It don't matter. I'm cleaning up after grown women. I mean, I'm uh, like paying all the bills. Like, oh no, Mark. One time I stayed with a whole bunch of ladies, and I swear right. everything was all good. We got along and everything, but it hurt it every time somebody like lost a job or something. And then that's when the arguments would come because everybody be like, "Well, who gonna pay her portion? Or who gonna pay her portion?" And nobody wanted to pay anybody's portion, so our bills would get super, super high. And then everybody like, well, I ain't paying. I'm paying. I'm moving out. I'm moving. So it's like, Dang. it's like, okay. <laughs> that wasn't it. I think no. I should have. Everybody should have pitched in. Right. Made it. For that People, person's portion. Yeah. But no, nobody would, it, it wasn't like a mutual agreement. So it's like, okay, if this person don't want to pitch in, then that leaves just the rest of us to pitch in for, it, it was, it was a mess. It was a mess. And it was like, I, after that, I was like, uh-uh, I can't do it. Nope. That's why when I be yeah, around cool. people and they be like, people discuss it and you can almost feel when somebody got something on their mind about trying, they need somewhere to move. It's just something in you. And one thing I used to tell people, I said, if you go on this, you know, people, they know, some of the people know who to go back to or something, even if it, however it went down. But anyway, they'll come and you'll be like, don't discuss it. Be in your right mind, both of whoever, or however, when you ask, when you want to know if you can live with someone, or they want to know if they can live with you, know exactly what that way you. Because the lot of problem is people just say, "Oh yeah, you can come and live here," or "Oh my yeah, I'll, I'll take you back and forth to work." But nobody comes up. It's no guy. Is it guidelines, rules, or rules or whatever? Or like they'll be like, "Well, I only could pay this much." Oh, don't worry about it until you know. I'll take you so you can save money for your car. But it's not that you being greedy or whatever. I think that people in the beginning, and it's okay, but then, like, you say, well, I've been giving so-and-so a ride maybe about two months, or they've been here two months, and they ain't at least offered. But you forget, especially if it's over cocktails or something, you forget you didn't sell the trust. Oh, no, come on, it's fine. But they don't mm-hmm. forget, but you might seem to forget. Or, like... Like Tanya said, somebody may lose a job. Hello? Mm-hmm. Oh, I thought I heard somebody else come on. Yeah. I'm, not, I'm here. Some, a friend of mine um, sent me a, um, a message on um, Messenger, and I was reading it. Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, what I was like wait a minute, because you know I get to talking. <laughs> but I, but yeah. I, I, have, I have seen a lot, and I mean, I thank God that when I left home, I, I didn't have to go back, and I didn't have to go to nobody's house. But if ever I could help, I help some kind of way. I don't mind helping, but I don't want to get beat. Yep. I, don't, I don't want to feel like nobody's fool. But let me tell you all this story about one time when I, I was working at this cleaning company, and the girl I was working on the floor, she came on, and she was pissed. But one of the things she told me about, about I'm just going to say a, a person that she let became a roommate. <laughs> she It was about dishes. <laughs> and, and you know you only can walk past dishes for so long before you before just snap they start out. You, yeah. <laughs> so she was like, "I'm not washing yeah. them dishes if they there when I get home." But it was a whole bunch of choice words with it. So the next yeah. night she came to work, she said that the person told her, "Oh, I wash dishes." So she was like, "Oh, okay, cool." So she came back to work another oh, on Sunday. Matter of fact, it was a Sunday morning. I was like, "Oh, this this is Sunday," you know. That language was all this laugh. I was trying to make her laugh. But uh, she said that the person that was staying with her, if they used a cup, they washed the cup out. They used a fork. They only washed the fork out if they used a plate. So it could be 10 more plates or whatever. Whatever they, whatever they didn't use, they didn't use. And what 
The straw she said broke the can with the back is when the person used the skillet to make an egg sandwich. <laughs> She said that was it. They had to go. I was like, <laughs> so sometimes when oh, I was, sometimes when I was thinking about when I was cooking funny. eggs, <laughs> I'm like, eggs get a person put out. <laughs> yeah, that they is, ain't that's, washing their dishes. I hate that, but yeah. <laughs> but I, I don't get. I didn't get why this person went on it. If they, if you, if you making a sink of water, but then she said no, it wasn't a sink. It was like if she used a fork. Took some dish liquid, dropped soap on it, and just washed the fork off. Oh, uh-huh. so they washed off their own individual. Whatever, yeah, whatever they used, it, they that was it. It wasn't like I don't care if it was all these other, you know, whatever. I'm not making a sink of water. I don't want to wash dishes. I'm just gonna wash what I messed up. I, was I like, see what uh-uh, you're saying. You got now. to roll with that one. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, thanks for calling in, Mark. We appreciate hearing. See, that's what I told people. I said, call in with your good stories. Call in with your bad stories. About, I know it's you know, good supporting way. people or being supported. So, you know, because a lot oh, of people... Um, Go ahead. Uh, just quickly, um, just, uh, um, yeah, I'll just, I just want to say really quickly, like, I, um, um, I'm, again, I'm starting my new talk show, um, channel on monday and i'm gonna do like a um a pilot episode on monday cool cool kind of explaining about what my talk show is going to be about and Mm -hmm. um i got some really good stuff that's going to be coming up and i'm working with a couple of people i'm working with one guy from australia no okay um to be on my um show Okay. I'm working with another um, lady who I have a connection with through Sweet Ma. I'm I um, love talking Sweet Ma. to her, and I'm hoping to get Miss Gina on the panel. So, okay. that'd be and cool. a few more other people. That'd be good. I will tune in. You said Monday. They have like a Google Hangout, like kind of like guest panel thing. I never use Google Hangout. I, I, I'm kind of scared to try it. It just looks so complicated. I don't know why. It just looks so complicated. Yeah, I got it. I'm trying to um, figure it out, too. And I'm just going to use, yeah, I'm going to use that, like, as a guest panel. And, mm-hmm. like, mm-hmm. you know, how talk shows used to do it back in right. the day when they yeah. have guests, like, have a guest panel of people mm-hmm. on the stage. And it's going to be something like that. And it's going to be, like a, like, a syndicated, like, Talk show. Okay, that's that cool. cool. I, I will definitely, I will definitely tune in. Yeah, I already hit your bell, so I, I um, I connected yeah. to you over there earlier today when I saw yeah. the uh, link. I was like, okay, yeah. let me subscribe so, to that. Yeah, so 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 I'm just in the works right now. I'm talking to Dawson and Jonathan, and I'm talking to the uh, young lady who I connected through through Sweet Ma and mm-hmm. um. And I'm talking to them, and I'm just, a few more other people going to hopefully be on board. I hope, again, to get Ms. Gina on board. And, yeah, it's going to be like a panel. Mm-hmm. And it's going to be like a really good discussion yeah. um, about, like, YouTube content creating and things like that and more or less stuff in the batch mm-hmm. um, with that um, um, into regards about YouTube content creating. Yeah. Okay. Okay, I got That's you. That's going to be the focus of discussion. I got you. I'll be in, Um, you said it's going to be, the first one going to be Monday night? Yeah, it's going to be a promo, I mean a pilot for me to explain, oh, to okay. talk about what my talk show channel is going to be about, and okay. then probably in the next couple of weeks, I'm going to do an official um, episode, and it's going to be like a, like how, like a syndicated talk show. Okay. Like about an hour long. Okay. That's cool. Mm-hmm. That's cool. That sounds good. Go for it. Go for it. Yeah. Good luck with that. <laughs> well, I'll be there to support. I'll be there to support. Monday. Yeah. And I'm sure Miss Gina will too. You know, she's really supportive. Yes. Yeah. yeah, she's very supportive. And again, like I said, I just hope I can get her in the panel because mm-hmm. it will be um, a really good um, panel. Mm-hmm. To have her, and I'm thinking about getting Lady Nika. Mm-hmm. Um, She's letting me can support me, and like I said, I already got the, I already have the two other people confirmed, and they're definitely on board to, of, of, to do it. Okay. So cool. I'm hoping to get more people on board to do it. 
to have like a panel so we can discuss about um, YouTube content stuff and then the ups and downs. That's and good. Yeah, the ups you know, and downs and ins people, and outs. People, <laughs> people, yeah, yeah, people, you know, um, so um, ex- um, tell, telling us um, their stories about um, YouTube and how you know, they were affected, you know, if they would have got into it with somebody. Yeah, like and the beefs like, and stuff. explain their stories mm-hmm. and stuff like that. And the reason why I'm doing this because I want to do it um, because I want to have like a cultural exchange mm-hmm. oh, yeah. um, thing to kind of kind of talk about how other sectors of YouTubers, how they deal with if they have a falling out with a certain YouTuber mm-hmm. and how they went about it. And like I said, for them to share their stories about what happened to them when they had these falling out. Oh, okay. So and like the people what was, who, uh, what, what, and what transpired when all that stuff happened to them. So you're talking about the people who like had beefs and stuff it. with people or were dragged possibly? I'm sorry. You talking about like people who had beefs and or maybe been dragged or things like that? Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yes. Yes. And have a discussion about that and just you know about about the pros and cons and things like that and just have a discussion about people Ooh, who were dragged and, and things like that and mm-hmm. the this Australian gentleman, um, he um he had an opinion about um um about a certain youtuber that we both followed at one point um who did a story about a, a dead shark okay mm-hmm. and it's a fun story it was a dead shark in in this tank and like these are like urban explorer people mm-hmm. um one of them was Urban Explorer people, not the gentleman that's going to be on my TV. He does regular commentary on his channel um, mm-hmm. from Australia. But um, this was another gentleman from Australia who he had a YouTube ship with. Um, he um, um, uh, uh, had an opinion um, about about the guy um, um, who did um, con- who did content about this dead shark and people who broke in and to no no who no he went to go visit the place and then people found out where the place was and they went and vandalized the place oh, wow. because he was showing it around and giving it its location oh, and so okay. he I guess he got a lot of heat from it and so the Australian guy that's going to be on my channel he gave he reached out to him behind the scenes about this and gave him gave him his opinion about it and the guy didn't like it. Oh, okay. So they fell out. Oh. Over yeah. over the opinion that this the guy who's gonna be a guest on my channel, you know, they fell out mm-hmm. over because he didn't like because the other guy didn't like his opinion. Oh wow. Okay. And they were and they and they fell out but um they kinda did it off screen. But he, but the guy who's going to be on my channel, he addressed the situation about what happened mm-hmm. between him. Mm-hmm. Oh, wow. Or between them when he gave his opinion. Mm-hmm. So, and um, it, 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 when that, that falling out situation was very, it went, it went, it, it was different, you know, and then um, uh, it wasn't all dragging and all that other stuff, mm-hmm. you know. They said what they needed to say to each other off screen, I guess, and they went their separate ways. Oh, yeah. Okay. And it wasn't like they, they were going on. He, he was going and dragging. He addressed the issues, but he didn't go. They didn't do all the dragging videos and stuff like that. And but, um, but um, um, I'm gonna have him as a guest because. You know, for him to share his story and for him to share how he went about dealing with that situation. Oh, shoot. Sure. You and might I have a lot of guests on that show because there's a lot sector. of people. I want to mm-hmm. have, yes, I want to have the black sector of YouTube to kind of explain, like, how mm-hmm. it works. Unfortunately, what they, with these, with the black YouTube sector, when they, when they had a falling out or whatever with some people and how that transpired with them. Mm-hmm. And it was, and it was quite serious. Yeah. Hmm. That's gonna be interesting. It led to that thing and all that other stuff, and I want to just for them to share that 
story mm-hmm. and have it as a panel discussion mm-hmm. I and, got get, you. and get it from different points of view. Yep, I got you. Well, again, I will be there supporting you. Sure will. So, I just wanted just to um, just to kind of explain. That's going to be like one of the first episodes, and then I'm going to do another episode about bullying. And I got a very close friend of mine that I'm going to have on the on my dog show. Okay, yeah, that'll be. I I would like to enjoy watch. I would, can't wait to see that one as well. Yeah, but I will be yeah, there. Yeah, because mm-hmm. we I'll we need to. it. We need, I was saying this on the Guinness channel last night, we need something like this. Mm-hmm. We need this. Yeah, we sure do. Because this has, it's got to stop. Yep, you're right. You're right. Like One I always say, everybody. Um... And I think by having this Australian YouTuber on as a panel on the guest to explain his story, I think this would be kind of like a cultural exchange. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, because a lot of people think it does. Um, it only happens to a certain... Like, a lot of people think it only happens in our sector. It, it's not true. But it does not happen. No. It happened in, 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 in that sector, too. But they didn't go about dragging each other. <laughs> That's the whole point why, why I, want, I want to bring him on as a panel. Okay. Right. Yeah. Okay. Well, I'm sure, I'm sure that'd be a good show. And yep. hopefully you get a good, tur- an awesome turnout, too, for your first show. Yeah. Okay, well, I will let you go and let you continue your discussion. I'm sorry, I just wanted just to come and share. Oh, no, you are. You was fine. You was fine. I appreciate yeah, you. No, I no, always no, love, no. Thank you. always love hearing from you. Okay, yes. You're so welcome, ladies. I'll, I'll see you guys back in the chat. All right. All right. Okay. Thank all right. you. All right. Bye. 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 Yeah, that's... That is Mark the Traveler, y'all. For y'all who just tuned in, Mark the Traveler, he has a great travel channel, so make sure y'all check him out. And also, um, he has a new channel that he just started. Just, just started. And he's in there under his new channel as, where is it? Mark the Traveling Talker. So make sure you hit him up on both of his channels. Hello? Oh, hold up. Oops. Did I unplug the speaker? Hello? Hello? Oh, okay. I don't know. Sometimes this thing makes weird noises when somebody's on the line. I can't tell when they're on the line. Okay. <laughs> so. Okay, nobody's on the line. But yes, his, um, both of his, he first came in tonight on his main channel which is if you scroll up and look at all the people who've been commenting his main channel is mark the traveler Mm -hmm. and so make sure you guys connect with that one and then his he came in again under his uh new channel name under that is called mark the traveling talker so make sure you um you guys connect with both of his channels um he was just giving us a little explanation of mark the traveler traveling talker and basically, it's going to be a show, a panel with different guests on it. We're going to be um, I like that. on Google, <laughs> Google, uh, what is it called? Google Hangout. Hangouts. Um, he's going to have different people on there, you know, guest speakers and everything, and discussing things that go on on YouTube, like the beefs, people getting dragging, <laughs> people getting doxing, you know, all kind of stuff like that. So, yeah, everybody make sure they um, connect with Mark. And hey, kicking it with Cheryl. I saw you call in. I I typed in the comment because Mark was uh, talking to us, so I didn't want to, uh, you know, interrupt him to speak to you. But thanks for tuning in tonight. I really appreciate everybody who's turned out tonight for our talk and our discussion. Again, if anybody wants to call in, feel free. The number is listed on the video description. Um, the call in number and the pen. And I'll also uh, repaste it again here in the chat so that you guys have the phone number and the PIN number. 476054754075. PIN number 753359. That is the call in number. So if you want to call in and give us anything, you know, talk to us about anything that has to do with supporting family and friends, like how much is too much. When it comes to supporting family, friends, have you ever been burnt by a friend? Um, 
things like that. You know, let us know if you had a good experience. Let us know if you had a bad experience helping out a family member or a friend. No, you want to say something? Yeah. Go ahead. I wanted to uh, just, I don't know how to, well, I'm just going to start. But one thing I wanted to know about, like, being supportive towards family, friends, or even a stranger. You know, sometimes you find yourself as being the person that needs the support. Okay, I can understand that because sometimes that I, I have been in that position. But you one too? of the one of the things I wanted to say is okay, like if you ever dealt with something and then like you might have a somebody there and you can go to them and you can talk with them about it because they may be going through it, not necessarily with you, but they may be going through it or they may have went through it. So you go to them, but then you it comes, you know, it comes to somewhere where, you know, like they say, you can't let nothing consume your time and your day all the time like that. So me... I went through a little thing a while a while back, and uh, I'm not going to turn this into a religious thing. But one thing I I had to tell myself is, while while I'm talking and think, you know, and and, and going through something, what I was going through, I had a I had just one time I asked God about me myself, and one thing I said is from now on, not just saying that it always be you as a person, but sometimes. We so easy to say, oh, poor me, and they picking on me, and, and this, 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 and that. So one of the things that came to me, and I want to say that I believe that it was a number of God opening up me as I asked him to take a look at yourself. And sometimes, you know, not saying people don't do things or say stuff to you, but sometimes you got to basically check yourself. And if it feels better, like it felt better for me to let stuff go, not that you're letting people get away with things or nothing like that, but sometimes you got to let go. And you really honestly got to let go. And if God ever tell you or you ever feel like it's something from him or just you get this relief about something, you say, I'm going to leave this alone. I'm going to let this go. Do it. Right. Because just like if you drink alcohol, if you eat food, Every day, and you can and more. I mean, overdo it or whatever. You know, just the same way as like always feeling, feeling down or dumpy or or want others to feel that way about you. Don't don't let don't don't let that be nobody. You know, mm-hmm. and it's okay to be there for people, but also it's okay to have people there for you. But sometimes when you yourself know it's a line like dealing with weight. A lot of people nowadays, I see more people than I ever into their fitness, you know, and that's good. But that's one of the things that you got to know to do on your own and for yourself. You can't make nobody do nothing, and you can't have things the way that you want it. But also, being an adult is what I had to tell myself. Everything ain't always, a, it's not always targeted towards you, is guess what I'm saying. So when you support somebody, support them, from the heart. And when you can't do it, or you know you don't know what to do or know what to say, and you just can't even listen to it no more, then you got to let go. Mm-hmm. And that doesn't mean that that person, you know, don't want to be friends, you don't love them, or you, you know, you want to cut them off as your family member. It's just easier to, you know, sometimes you got to take steps back and look at, and, and look at things, I guess. Yeah, and I know some, um, I know I hear a lot how people say, uh, if you can't, like, if, if when people need help or, or ask you for help, and no matter how much it is, I know a lot of people say, if you can't afford to give it, then don't give it. Because sometimes people loan somebody something or, um, loan them some money for whatever amount, and... You know, people be like, well, if you don't complain about them not paying you back or something like that, you shouldn't have even gave it to them because obviously, but it's like, it's a two-way street on that because sometimes you probably can't afford to give somebody something because you might be living paycheck to paycheck. 
you know, but like, like the saying goes, the saying goes, um, you know how many times you ever seen that question on Facebook or something? <laughs> People say, would you give somebody your last dollar? And everybody always says, yes. Everybody, what is your last dollar? Yes, my last dollar. That's I'll get my a, last I dollar. Mean, People will be like, yes, 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 yes. But honestly, seriously, if I came up to you and said, can I have all the money in your purse right now? You going to be mad? Okay, see what I'm saying? <laughs> like... People, people say that. People say that, but everybody does not really mean that. Everybody doesn't. You give every somebody your last, all the money that you have. Like when you say last dollar, people sometimes people take it as I have one dollar left. So would I give it to somebody? Of course, if you got a single dollar, what the hell are you gonna do with a single dollar? Go buy it. Uh. uh <laughs> I mean, you can't even buy candy with a single dollar unless you go to the discount store, like uh, you know, Family Dollar. Or tight, if you go to Walmart with a dollar and try to buy some candy, and all the Snickers now cost like one sixty. I mean, what you gonna do with one dollar? But that's not really what the question means. The question means, would you give away the money that you have to somebody else? That's basically what. It really means, it and if that was the question, <laughs> if that if people understood it more directly, they would be like, "Hey, no, I give them some of it. <laughs> I, 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 I buy them some of that." But you know, well, so when people say, uh, when they say, uh, <laughs> when they say you, you shouldn't giant. give people, <laughs> when they say you shouldn't give people something that you can't go without, like right, if you, yeah, if you really yeah, can't afford to your rent right. money. Your mortgage money, your car payment. But some people do because of the simple fact. They're trying to be good. You, they're trying it's to be good people. They call it and, and, and hoping and trusting that the person they're giving the money to is going to do right by them. I didn't have that happen before where people be like, can I, I need to really borrow some money. I really, really, really need to borrow some money. I'd be like, okay, now this is coming from my car payment money that I'm paying you. Because it was it bees it bees times like that, you know it bees times like that. Growing up in the hood, we was always living paycheck to paycheck. So I it wasn't it wasn't rare that I would see somebody loaning people <laughs> money. It was more of an issue of people getting their money back, and then somebody else. Well, you shouldn't have lent it to them if you didn't really have it to give. But you when you see people in need, I mean, some people just have good hearts, have big hearts, and they just trusting that you will do right by them and not burn your bridges and give them their money back. I mean... Now, soon here, I'll be able to, I'll be able to do that. Because my mean, blessing, yeah. my greater is coming. I know that. And I don't mind helping nobody, true enough. But, like, if you tell me you're going to give it back to me and you don't, that's like my mom said, don't be no bad paymaster. But once a person, you know they do that, and my daddy said this, they can't ask you no more, but honey, that's how it used to be. People would know they owe you and come right back. Like, okay, wait a minute. I don't know. I, don't don't judge the book by a cover. Don't get it twisted. Just because you got me once, you won't get me again. I tell you that. <laughs> so don't think that. But now, my heart is good, be, but... Mm -mm. Should you still be cool with them? Like, say you oh, yeah, somebody, we'd be cool, but you can't... Uh -uh. Say you loan somebody, like, hundreds of thousands of dollars. And I'm going to want that. I'm going to be... I how won't step back. A, how good of a relationship can you really have with somebody when you know they basically used you? I got this answer. Go and on. took advantage of you? I, I can't this. even look at you the same way. I got the answer. I'm like, here she come. That man on me 25... I, 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 it would just always be... It, 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 yeah, like, and, and that's where you ain't even put me on no payment plan. I can't even get five dollars a week. You know how my grandma used to say back in the day <laughs> when we was growing up. Grandma used to always say, "A bill collector could never garnish you as long as you send them at least a dollar. If you send them a dollar, and I'm like, Grandma, for real." A dollar, she said. You send them. You a send dollar, them something. You sending them five dollars. You send them something every time that bill comes around. Not talking about the light bill or the gas bill because you send oh, you them a dollar. Be a dark, you gonna be. <laughs> you gonna, you gonna be, be like, with a flashlight, <laughs> walking around with a little flashlight <laughs> in the dark, like <laughs> in the dark and thirsty <laughs> or smelling. <laughs> Lord I'm Jesus, buy, buy, buying like water at the grocery store, trying to cook and you know splash some water on you to take a. a 
of the bird, the bird bath. bath. <laughs> Everybody got to share the same water in the sink. Don't try not to Ooh, try not to I get it too dirty. Cheapskate, a world cheapskate. <laughs> uh, what is that show? Oh, what, is, what? What? They all use the same bath water. Um, cheapskate. Oh, I called, ain't never seen that show. A, I forgot what the whole name of it is, but honey, don't don't do that. I, I can't do it. Food. No, no, I can't do it. I can't. But let me, let me yeah. address the part where you said if you lost somebody, with, and, and you know, I got like said my grade to come on be able to. But it's going to be money that if I don't get it back, I might feel some type of way and I might need to pray a little bit about it. But I'm going to have to pray something. a lot. If there's a lot of money, I'm going to have to pray a lot. I'm going to tell you something. Uh, if you lost somebody, say $3,000. Yeah, let's will, say 3000 People get bold and it depends on where you at. Now, if you are up in the thousands or even more, you know, and this person don't pay you back, now you say, I tell you, you ain't got to worry about how you going to Act or talk or, you know, you ain't got to worry about how nothing's going to be around them. Because for one, they going to avoid you. Uh-huh. I was avoided for $15 by somebody. $15? And like That's nine seven out of 10, after I found out that it, I, I mean, I really had forgot. Yeah, because I, I mean, seen them in so like, long. You know, 15 come and go all the time. So, But I'm like, $15, I ain't even seen you. Was that it? <laughs> so I guess, you know, I, I'm going to be honest. One I got, you know, I guess they feel like the mothership came in mm-hmm. and bought them, and bought them, what they call it, a mon- the monetary blessing. Mm-hmm. So they, they they up and said something to me, but you think I didn't take that 15? Y'all, you better know I did. Exactly. But I had really forgot, and I was wondering why sometimes when I did see this person, it was like a... Like, dang, what I do to you? I ain't seen you. But like I said, you know, I took the 15 and, and a few hours. Yeah, see, see, that, I, can, I, can, I can deal with that. I remember, one, I remember one time, somebody in particular, you know, we never throw names on this show. We might tell you stories, but we never throw names. Um, But they had always, 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 always borrowed money from me. And it was basically, I wouldn't even call it a borrow. I would just say <laughs> ask. They would say borrow. In my mind, I'm like, ask. And they would say, can I borrow? In my mind, it's like, can I have? Because right. I never got and it back. And that's what they say. You're to long it was like, you need back. That's what I was just saying earlier. Yeah. yeah people yeah. say you shouldn't give out what you can't afford to give out. Yep. But, you can't afford, yep. You so, sure you know, like when that. they wouldn't pay me back, I'd be like, oh, well, it was only like, you know, it wasn't nothing to brag about. It wasn't nothing that's going to get me put out my apartment or my house or nothing like that. So I would just be like, okay. And they come back again. I might say something like, dang, didn't I just, you know, okay, you know, here you go. The last time or the most recent time was probably like, I don't know. It was probably last year. One of the same persons. And they asked me for something. Mm -hmm. Well, they said borrow, of course. And in my mind, I'm saying have because that's what really what they're going to do. They're going to have it and never give it back. So, <laughs> so I said, you know what? Take this. Don't worry about paying me back. Don't worry about paying me back. Don't worry about paying me back. Okay. That now, because of the fact that I've been letting them borrow, or should I say have, for a long period of time. And it, again, it wasn't nothing. It wasn't like no huge amount, but it started to add up. Right. And to a huge amount. You know what I'm saying? So it ain't like I gave them a huge amount up front. But it started to add up over the years, and this person never giving me my money back. And, you know, but this last time when I said, take it, don't worry about borrowing it, take it, that was my last time. Yeah. Because the title of the show is, How Much is Too Much? When it comes to supporting family and friends. And at that time, I was feeling like I was being an enabler. Like, they, they not being able to... Okay, it's a person who doesn't find it very tasteful to work. <laughs> Let me put it that way. I'm okay. trying to put it the nicest way I'm possible. Tight, that one. They, 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 they don't. They, they scared of a time clock. And so, but you know, you that person, you be like, man, you know, they really need it. They, you know, they ain't mm-hmm. got it. They really need it. They well, you know... I need to buy this for bus tickets for work. I need to get to a job. I ain't they ain't going to no job. I know this. But so that last time I was like, 
Just keep it. Just keep it. I think they understood at that time. It was done. That it was a wrap. And that was about a year ago. I haven't heard anything from that person. They never offered to give it back to me, even though I told them I just have it. They never offered to give anything else back for me that I gave them over the past time. It, I don't even care. I don't. I don't want it. You know, just just understand that I'm not the person you're going to come to anymore. You got to find somebody else. You got to find somebody else because I can't keep. <laughs> I can't keep supporting yeah, no, you. Right. I can't keep supporting you <laughs> all your life. I mean. See, it, see, that's why I said sometimes it's too much. Even though you want to be like the good person, the good Samaritan, to take care of someone, sometimes we be enabling people. What you say, Mama Cislo? <laughs> I, know that, I know that's right, Mama Cislo. She said a job tastes better than starving. <laughs> For real, though. For real, though. I'm, I'm like. I know that's right. I'm so serious. I'm so serious. And I remember one time I had loaned some money to somebody and it really was part of my bill money. They didn't pay me back. And guess what I had to do? I had to turn around and ask my parents for some money. And guess what I heard? Rah, 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 rah. Why you didn't? Mm -hmm. You ain't supposed to. Din, din, din. I'm like, well, they told me they was going to pay me back. Mm -hmm. It... But if you borrow money from a person that borrowed money from you, they don't pay you back, but boy, you would think you got a heart. Got their heart the way they be acting. Mm-mm. Mm-mm-mm. Mm-mm. I don't really but, know how to go down with that one. That's why I was like, mm-mm. And I got a story for y'all. Ooh, I just realized the light ain't even over here facing us. <laughs> Dang, we all, we was all dark. Y'all ain't even say nothing. Like, y'all ain't said we can't yeah, see y'all. The light was facing the total opposite way from us. <laughs> I just realized it looked like, I think because the sun started going down, and I realized it was getting dark in this kitchen. But, uh, but, yep, yeah, it's like, man, I remember one time, this, I know somebody who always, 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 always take in anybody. Whether it's family, friends, not so good friends, not so close of a cousin, not so close, you know. Mm -hmm. If somebody comes up and, and say they need a place to stay, they like, sure, come on in, come on in. And every single time she would allow somebody to stay with them, they would oh, take yeah. advantage of her, they wouldn't do anything, they wouldn't pay bills, they would always mess up her house. And oh, when it was time to leave, you darn near have to call the cops to get them out the house That's after they been staying there for months I, and months leave. and months. And just don't want to leave. And then the cops, you know how it goes with the cops. Well, have they been staying there this many months? Oh, Are they yeah, getting they there? Uh, 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 they a resident. If you stay in somebody, and see, that's why you got to give them. <laughs> when you let somebody, uh. That's why I say you got, you, you all say, like you said, you like always say, come on in and stay. No, you got to say. Okay, listen. You can stay 30 days. From here to there. And then on that 30th day, on that 29th day at the midnight, that 10th and 30th, you got to go. Because people, and don't just verbalize it no more because they, they don't really mean Let's it. Let's write it down. You got to write it down. You with a text message. Text message. You better have it on Facebook, Facebook. Twitter, and Instagram. Make a public post so everybody can see it. That's such so you just can't say, roll. I got proof. All these people that seen this post, no. <laughs> I'm just but saying, real, but I know, know that, I though. watched the, um, I forgot what that show is. Okay, I like a lot of reality TV and talk shows know. or whatever shows. Is, but <laughs> it was a show where this man, he had a lot of uh, out-of-state properties. So when he went to his property, he uh, walked up and, and he was paying somebody that was living in that state to tend to his stuff. And so he kept getting all these notices from, like, just say the state of whoever. Uh -huh. So once he was able, he went to the state of whoever. And he walks up to his property. He said he was just knowing that one his property. Uh-huh. So he gets in there and went on the sun porch. From the pictures that he was getting sit, shown by the person who was supposed to be tending to the property, oh, it, but what it was is, you know, how you take pictures and you could just keep showing, like, the same thing, but 
It ain't actually the today picture or whatever. Oh. So the man said when he walked up there, he was like, he noticed ain't his property, but the state or whoever was telling him how overgrown stuff was yeah. and how people was coming in and out and they didn't know and so what was going on. And so the person who there. was running the place was sending him fake pictures, like pictures yeah, of the house. Yeah, yeah. And he said to them, Nate, whatever he thought, you know, that, you know, because the, the, <laughs> pro- the, the property was vacant. <laughs> But he was just keep, thought he was paying this person mm-hmm. to keep it up in case somebody wanted to, you know, to be and they ready. did a bad job. So when he got there and he went up there, he was like, he, he just the man was blown away. And I'm looking, we looking at the TV. Me and my, me and my, my son was laughing, but it wasn't funny because it did, it did make you feel some type of way, you know. Yeah. He walked up there, and the sun porch is a huge. Mm-hmm. All these washing them dryers and like some was working, the sun was broken down. So as you see in some big burly looking man, the man called comes up to him and he was like, you know, as you come out, you be telling your story to the people. He came out you. the house like he was. No, there. when when the owner came in the, the through the sun porch way, he was going. You know, you know your house. You walk in, so out of nowhere here comes this man and asking him, "What is he doing there?" Because if you look at the person that approached the owner, you would be like, you you know, you could tell the man was. Dressed it, they was up. They weren't dressed the same way anyway. Long story short, but what it was is, you know, this man comes to his property finally after years, though, and he, he already should have been checking on right, his property. But he going off of this person said they sending them pictures, so he's sending them money for taking care to of it and stuff. Up the up your yeah, upkeep. Thank you. So when he do get there, he get confronted by this man. So then he got to call the police. And so then it wasn't just that. As you go through, it was like curtains, but they were some was like some was like in a room. It was like say a curtain this way and a curtain that way. So that made four rooms, like say in here, and then four rooms in there, or however many they could say. So it was These like the people whole bunch had of people living in there. What they called squatters. Oh my god! And they were separated by curtains. <laughs> just living in there. But what the man was saying was when he walked up, I was like, is that a laundry? It looked like a laundry mat because of the way. <laughs> and that man had because years of. Because all the people that of, live in there, they probably needed like three, four washers. <laughs> they had, he had years of uh, uh-uh. going back and forth to court. And then he went from property to property. And the person that he was well, sending the money to, I'll he probably that, was but, getting rich like a fat cat. He probably was taking all that money. He was taking that money into his own household, or and want to do a jack for this man's sure. property. And when it got to like you know, like anytime when the city say if you don't do something by say Easter Sunday or something, they gonna take they come in and they gonna yeah they and if they got to do it, they gonna charge this. They gonna yeah. do that. So that's when he finally decided to come. I felt in a way I felt bad, but then I was like. Even you though somebody doing something for you, you know, you still once and again, I don't care what, you still should go there. But uh, they have set they set up house, and he couldn't just put the people out. That's what, that's what made because me Because they show. are a resident. After they've been, we and a lot of this, people know so. that. They smart, and they know if I stay in this person's house long enough, even if I ain't doing nothing to contribute, they can't put me out because when they try to, they don't say they get mail there, how long they've been living yep. there. Okay, they are resident there. Now, I don't know if people was getting mail or none of that kind of stuff, but they had been there and the neighbors was complaining and the trash and all the stuff outside just that got a hot mess. Mm-hmm. But that's one of the things that is true. Even like, it, I know people have properties and stuff out of town and been inherited and all that kind of stuff. You may live somewhere else or whatever, but still check on your stuff. Don't always go out because the way the world is now, people can say they some one place and they be another. Mm-hmm. You never know what's going on with your stuff, and like like how um it was lady work for a realtor company, and they told her she could stay in one of the houses until they didn't give her no no deadline, I guess you know, and so once the, the uh realtor company started getting bought by other companies. Nobody, that was, I guess, one of the houses that fell through the crack. Mm-hmm. So, eventually, the lady had been there so long, they didn't want to come for her. She lived there 14 or 20 years. I'm, I'm going to try to find it on my on, on my phone to show mm-hmm. you. She lived there for a long time, and then here they come finally. I guess this house pops up, 
and we want to want some a uh, realtor company found now they want to tell her she got the lead wow well you know what there's a story um when my son what what year was this last year i think it was last year he turned 21 mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and his friends like some of his friends had uh moved in it was like one main friend and a couple of other friends had moved in with that friend and then they had asked my oldest son would he move in as well we're like hey man you know you want to come crash kick it with us and you know stay here we got a nice crib and you know all this and we can all split the bills and whoop 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 and i told my son (laughs) now this is from experiences from when i was growing up in the hood and living here living there Staying with four, five, ten, eleven people, and everybody's supposed to split the bills. And I told him, I said, you know what? My wish for you is that when you are ready to move out, like after college, you know, whatever, and when you are ready to move out, that you get your own place, your own apartment, your own bachelor pad, and you first experience what it feels like to be on your own. I mean, like the one big goal that a child should have after graduating high school, going to college, if they want to, Mm -hmm. is their first place. Like your first, your very own place. Like you leaving your parents, no more rules, no more coming in a certain time of night, no more mama nagging you about your bedroom or did you take the trash out or, you know, stuff like that. You should want to have your own place. And that was like... My, that was my dream when I was a young adult, you know, a new adult. And so I told him, I said, I want you to experience that because I didn't stay with people before. And sometimes it can lead to bad fights. It can lead to best friends turning enemies, you know, all that kind of stuff. And so he no was lie. like, he listened to me. He listened to me, even though he really wanted to do it. He listened to me. Why? Not even, <laughs> not even a month later, not even a month later, one of the friends of his hit me up and, you know, you know, when your child been friends with somebody for so long, sometimes they call you yours. mom and they was like, mom, can I please stay with you? I need, I need somewhere to stay. I'm like, hold up, wait a minute. <laughs> Didn't y'all just like get this? nice house that y'all just moved in Mm -hmm. this nice fancy crib and all y'all paying bills and and he's Mm -hmm. like well we getting put out i'm like what you mean you getting put out (laughs) how you getting put out y'all it's it's full y'all go ahead you can get a water out the fridge i'm like how you uh (laughs) it's like four or five of y'all in there and y'all getting put out because y'all can't what what's going on what's really what's tea What's tea? And so, come to find out. And then besides that, I was like, why you? Why can't you just move back home? I'm like, why can't you just go back to your mama house? And I know his mom, you know, we real cool. I'm like, why you can't just go back to your mama house? Mm-hmm. And he's like, because I don't want to go back home. I'm like, well, you know what? Go home. I'm telling you, go home. Go home. Your mom is going to let you come back home. No, she probably going to let me go back home. Da, 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 da. I'm like, you need to at least try to go back home to your parents. And the only reason why I said this, not that I, you know, I love all my friend, my son's friends, especially the one, the best friends and all that kind of stuff. I consider them like, you know, sons. And I told him, I said, you need to go home. I said, because the one thing about it, when you tell me, as a young adult, as somebody who's like 19, 20, 21, 22, a fresh new adult, when you tell me you can't go back home because you don't get in, get along with your parents, how do you think that makes me feel like you if would you be here. in my house? Yeah. Because my kids, we don't do that. Um, I tell you to wash dishes on your day, and you don't. I tell you to take trash out on your day, and you don't. I tell you to clean your room up, and you don't. See, we don't do that around here. (laughs) You got to have your room clean, do your chores on your chore days, and then you can go and do whatever you want. Go hang with your friends. Go hang with your girlfriends. Stay up and play video games or whatnot if it's not a school night. I mean, you are free to do not whatever you want to do, but you know what I'm saying. 
If they want to hang out with their kids, first. right? Take care of your business first. We we don't do all that. Mm-hmm. And the back talking and all that kind of stuff. We don't do never have, never will. And I have a twenty two year old and an eighteen year old. And they will tell you. Yeah. We don't do that. Mm-hmm. And and why? Because they like to have a freedom. They like to be able to have their phones, their electronics, their TVs, their PlayStation fours, they 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 Beat boss beats, but whatever you call them, things that they got. I mean, all they stuff. They like having all they stuff mm-hmm. for them to continue having all they stuff and using all they stuff. They yeah, have to do rules. follow mm-hmm. rules in the house. So if you're not doing what your obviously you're not doing what your mother wants you to do at home. So That's I don't want you to, you to come elsewhere. here mm-hmm. because what's gonna happen is that what's gonna happen is you let your child close, close friend move in with you and they gonna do something that you not gonna like. Mm-hmm. Then they ain't gonna be close And anymore. they might not remain close to your child for too much longer because <laughs> the same way I treat my children is the same way I'm gonna treat you and the same expectations I expect of them is the same expectations I expect of you. Good night, so, Mark. Thank you for joining us. Good night. Yeah, good night, Mark. And I'll be looking forward to your first um, introduction video Monday on your new channel. Thank you for tuning in and thank you for calling as well. Again, it's always <laughs> good talking to you. But yeah, so I told him. And then I called his mom. I told his mom what happened. She I, Exactly what I thought what was mm-hmm. going on. He didn't want to do chores. He didn't want to do this. If you don't want to do chores in your own mama house, why do I want you to come stay in my house? Because just because you ain't my blood, <laughs> you you going to be on the schedule with the chore schedule. Let's see what day. You Mondays. You Tuesdays. You <laughs> I would say we was bad at the chore, the chore thing. No, I, I tried I think, that shark thing. That don't work. That don't work. I think it just came like your kids' art when they make that. Oh, look what little Johnny made. Mm-hmm. That's what it became. It be my stuff on, and then January been the past. February, the calendar still, still on January. <laughs> it's now December, and the the chore chart is still on January. Like <laughs> ain't nobody wash dishes. Ain't nobody. To, so I just say, and it might oh. it work. It, it seemed to work for me, and it still do. Yeah, I tell you what, it don't get too too bad, cause I ain't never let it, and I'm just gonna be honest. But my mom used to say, start at the front door picking up things. So what I do is I tell everybody, if you want it, you better come get and it. And if it's yours, I pick it up, cause we did not come home and say, oh, you see my so and so. Because my daddy is too probably be in the trash. trash. Uh, you better know, especially if he didn't have enough. <laughs> I had a threat mom do that before. Yeah, before. Yeah, I'm telling yeah. you, if I tell oh, you worked, so it. many times to pick <laughs> up this and it's still not there and you find it in the trash, You'll be Mama, like, why you throw away my the shoe at? <laughs> That's my favorite shirt. <laughs> well, why that? I got one Jordan? <laughs> on the floor so long you must and it ain't too much of your favorite <laughs> you better call Michael Jordan for the other shoe you'll be like what the and he, gonna, he gonna charge you another 200 something dollars for so the your mom was gonna throw that one away in there you can't, it up you just can't blue. buy one piece you can't just buy one shoe you gotta buy a whole new set <laughs> one thing I learned uh, I, I, I mean and that, and that is good my daddy was like you know while cleaning up and how he used to say and like under the bed, now nah, I keep a bunch of stuff under my bed still to this day. But it is organized. It is in the shoe boxes, mm-hmm. and it's like extra like stuff I done bought, like pots or something or something. I want to put everything out at once because I ain't no. I just I'm gonna be honest. I throw some quick away. Mm-hmm. So, but my dad would take the broom. I just seen him do and it. Just, and just go. <laughs> What the world is that? You ever no, seen your phone? I know exactly you know, what you're talking about. had to go down. Oh, oh, my mama, they was a team. That's one thing I remember. My mama and daddy was a team. But my mama, one of, like, I, I, one time we came and I was like, what the world is my mama and them doing? My daddy was out. My, my daddy left that bed. My mama took that bruise and it just said, he I held the bed up, and he, I mean, we done done that before. I know exactly. I tell my son, like, hold the bed up in the air, and we just sweep all under the bed. I was I'm just like, what is like, all this stuff 
what the heck? heck? Okay, ain't nobody doing nothing. Ain't nobody going nowhere. Give mm-hmm. me your phones. What's all this under the bed? We couldn't grab nothing. <laughs> you be like, hey, like, it, it, mm-hmm. uh, I used to be like, but like, it was like more stuff towards the front of the bed. I had a problem with as always lining something up just the easier for me to get it. Right. And it was because I think because we shared rooms and I, me and my sister. So it was more of like, okay, I sleep on the front of the bed so this is where my stuff going to go. You put yourself at the bottom because we always had a bed against the wall. So mm-hmm. whoever slept where, that's if you slept on the back of the bed, the bottom of the bed where your junk went. And they always see something. So I guess it was like some did something to, to them. So they was, like, they was like, Bonnie and Clyde, let me go over here. Come on. I told them to get this up. They go over there. You be like, and you be like, no, don't throw that away. Uh oh, uh oh. Uh-uh. Too late. <laughs> so they'll do it. Or you'll Too come late. home from school it's in the middle of the flow. You're like, oh my God. <laughs> no, like, I, I, oh, that used to be a pet peeve because when I was growing up, my mom, I mean, we might not have had the newest fancy TVs or furniture or, I mean, clothes. I mean, we were really, really low income. Like, really low income. Um, but y'all had love. We weren't on the streets. But <laughs> we, we live hand to mouth. I'm, I'm not, hey, you know, I ain't shame of it. I ain't shame of it. But <clears throat> I appreciate everything that has happened in my life to bring me to where I am today. It teaches me how to budget. It teaches me how to go without. It teaches me how to appreciate everything that I get, you know, everything that God blesses me with and not to take stuff for granted because I remember those days when we would, like, be just living hand to mouth. But what I'm getting at is no matter how much we didn't have, if our furniture came from a thrift store or whatever, my mama kept that house so spick and span. You couldn't get no dust off no table on your finger. I mean, the curtains and the blinds and the... And we always had wooden and, floors. And you wouldn't have knew it. You wouldn't have, I mean, she kept the house spick and span. Like, And so, once I had kids, I knew automatically... What see see and that that's what's wrong with a lot of people. A lot of a lot of females grow up and they had their kids just tearing up the house, leaving <laughs> stuff all over the place, they food all over the place. I mean, just <laughs> in general, just they didn't make them clean or teach them how to keep a clean house. Then when they had their kids, dude coming over looking at the house like, dang girl, what did happen up you in here? Like that is if you can't. Keep a clean house, that's a problem. And if you have children that do not try to clean up their rooms and stuff when you tell them to, that's a problem. And we might not have had the best of everything, but I know that our house is supposed to look clean. And one thing I always tell my kids is, you never know when you might have a visitor or a guest. So, the living room, the dining room, the the (laughs) kitchen... Always needs to be clean. Yeah, Always. I ain't yeah. saying we got to run around here like a merry maid, like we getting paid to clean. And it's totally, totally spotless. <laughs> but nobody should walk into your house and be like, damn. damn. What's, <laughs> go- what's going on in here? Now, they get a little leeway with their bedrooms. With their bedrooms, as long as I can go in there and I can walk around the bed and I ain't tripping over this, that, and the third, and it ain't shoes and clothes. You know, they get a little leeway <laughs> in their room because that's their room. You know, that's your comfort. That's your comfort zone. But it better not look like no tornado that hit that mug, you know, from back in the day. Mm-hmm. Them bad old tornadoes that we didn't have up in here in the old, you know, back in the day. But, you know, so they get a little leeway with their room. But you have to appreciate what you got. No matter what your house look like, you take care of it. Because like that Bible verse says, if you do not appreciate the small things that God bless you with, then he ain't gonna bless you with the bigger but, things yeah, that you yeah, that's for. true. So that that's all true. I gotta say about that. <laughs> <laughs> that's all I gotta say about that. But you had me going, you talking about sweeping under the beds. I was like, oh my yeah, god. You be like, I, I remember those days. Say, you like, this, this, the, what's this? That, that they, motion, like, and they uh, throw away everything that they see, especially if they told you to pick it up several times or put it away. 
It's Watch on the car like, on oh, Wednesday. <laughs> it's sitting outside waiting on the trash man on Wednesday. <laughs> But yeah, (laughs) but again, yeah, the whole reason that I had thought of this topic today was because of listening to them ladies arguing at work. I think it's just on how you do with your kids, but if you ask somebody for help or opinion or anything on something, do you want the truth or do you want what makes you feel good? A lot of times, what, yeah, so sometimes. If you just want somebody to listen, I think we need to speak up on that and be like, I just need to vent about this. I really, honestly, not trying to be a... And I'll sit there and listen. Uh, yeah. You know, you ain't trying to be a jack A about it or nothing like that. But you know, you know, sometimes you go to somebody and you talk to them, then if you want feedback, let me know. If you want me to listen, let me know. Right. But once you tell me, you know, and like I'm going to tell somebody because I really know, I mean, I'm too old for that now for one, but still, like, if you go to... Come to me and you just want to vent, cool. If you come to me and you ask me what I think, do you want you want the truth because that's what I prefer to give you. Mm-hmm. I'm not trying to make you feel better or nothing because obviously if you're thinking that it's not right, then it's not right. Mm-hmm. But one thing is I I tell anybody help whoever you choose, but help them with help them with a whole heart and a good heart. Mm-hmm. Don't help to have something to talk about because of what you got today, you may not have tomorrow. And when you do help somebody, you ain't always got to tell. Tell everybody. I mean, I mean it's okay to tell. It's okay to tell situations. Like, whenever we talk about something on here, it's not necessarily to bash people. It's to tell our experiences of things that we've been through and things that have happened to us. But, um, when, like, 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 in, like, oh, real oh, life, wow. like, in real life, <laughs> what you say? Oh, <laughs> She read, she read an inbox message I just got on Facebook that popped up on my computer. Somebody said they forgot to give me $5. They owe me. Like, are they watching the show? <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to need that. We're going we're to need that. Hey, Thank you. Hey, homegirl. Hey, homegirl. If you're watching the show right now, this is not nothing we talked about. I forgot all about that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm okay, like, what you talking about? <laughs> she said... <laughs> oh my god what did it say? oh my god hold on let oh, me respond god. to her hold on let me get rid of these I'm gonna pull up my inbox <laughs> I'm gonna pull up my inbox Tie you wild boy <laughs> oh no baby but um <laughs> no that wasn't uh <laughs> Yeah, here's here's the cake that I made for you. Yeah. <laughs> Hold on, I'm I'm responding to this message right here. Okay, so I respond to her message. I was like, if she's watching, no, I don't think she's watching. I think she just sent me a message um, saying she uh, <laughs> owed me five dollars because she's supposed to. The person who just in my, she's supposed to be at a birthday party right now, so I know she ain't watching me on live. So, but that's why I just put that disclaimer out there. If you is watching me, I'm not talking about nobody who owes me money right now because if you owe me some money, I, I forgot about it. Oh, but, but yeah, when we tell about stuff, not we're never gonna time. mention anybody's names or nothing <laughs> like that. So when you do something for somebody, like in real life, um, don't yeah, post it all on Facebook that. and don't like like when we we talk about like to friends and family. Oh, I helped such and such with such and such with such and such. Like one time, okay, one time I was at a grocery store. One time I was at a grocery store. Matter of fact, it wasn't even a grocery store. It was Family Dollar. And there was a guy who had this little girl. This Oh, the girl was so cute. You know how you see those kids? They mm-hmm. so cute. Mm-hmm. You just want to take them home and play with them like their little baby doll. <laughs> I mean, she was so cute. Oh, I couldn't help looking at her her yeah. hair, her dimple. She was just so cute. And I was like, man, when she get older, you better have you a 
a shotgun because those boys gonna be like, hey, but, <laughs> but no, she was so cute and so pretty. And I was like, you know how you play with little kids? Hey, how you doing? What's your name? Hi, you know, just playing with the little kids. She looked like she was about two or three. And so, um, but old enough to walk. And then he had another child in the uh, grocery cart. And that child looked like it was probably about one. Mm -hmm. So the other one looked like it was about three, two or three. And the other one, you know. Anywho, we was in a family dollar. And I was in one lane. And he was in another lane. So our backs was back to back. Because, you know, like in Wal Walgreens, mm -hmm. how they have those lanes. You be facing this way and somebody behind you facing the other way. way. At the mm -hmm. other lane. Yeah, so we was like that, like, back to back. And I had overheard the cashier lady say, your car's not working. And he was like, are you sure? Try it again. Please try it again. And he had, like, all kind of stuff in the cart that he was trying to buy. And it was already bagged up. She had already bagged it up, you know, because they bag the stuff up while you, as, they, yeah. as they go. And so she tried again. She was like, no, I'm sorry. So your car got declined again. He was like, man, oh, my God. He was like, man, oh, my God. He said, I'll, I'll just... I'll just come back or something. He was like, you know what? Never mind. It was just like, <clears throat> it was, and then I turned around and I said, honest to God on my mother's, she's up in heaven. So honest to God, I turned around and all I said was, I'll pay for it. Mind you, I didn't know what was in them sacks because all the sacks was already bagged up. Mm -hmm. I didn't know what was in the sacks. And okay, I don't care if we at the dollar store. There's some things in the dollar store what? that cost way more than a dollar. <laughs> <laughs> so I didn't know. I didn't have no idea what was in his sacks because I was, I didn't pay attention to him at all. I was like talking to this little girl that was standing there, you know, mm -hmm. while I'm bringing my stuff. I'm like, hey, cutie, you know, whatever. And so she was like, Oh, okay. And the guy was like, oh, no, are you sure? And he was like, he didn't, it was like he didn't want to accept it. You know, like, you know, he's a guy. Right. You know, probably pride. He's a guy. Mm -hmm. And so I was like, yeah, sure. Just let me finish doing what I'm doing over here. So I finished paying for my stuff. I turned around. This was a while ago. This was probably five or six months ago, mm -hmm. last year. And so um, I turned around and the lady said, uh, because she had, um, I think she had canceled it. Yep, she had canceled it. And she had to ring everything back up because she already canceled the order. And so she rang up everything and she was ding, 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 you know. And then she was like, okay, the total is. I had no idea what he was buying. So I didn't know how much I was offering. You know what I'm saying? But <clears throat> I saw him. The little girl, I saw the daughter, and I could see the frustration on his face. And it didn't seem like, because why would you go to the store and purchase something if you know you don't have the money on your card? You know right, what I'm saying? Right. So it seemed like it might have been a mix-up. You know, you ever go and your card don't work and something that happened. You <laughs> forgot you did something or you're not just up there trying to get over. And so mm -hmm. I was like, okay, how much? It, it didn't even come up to that much. It was like, I don't know, maybe $18, $20. It wasn't even, it wasn't that much, but I had no idea yeah, what how much. It, what I didn't know what, what was in there. Yeah, when yeah. she started ringing up the stuff, it was like spaghetti. It was spaghetti sauce. It was bread. It was washing powder. It was stuff that people need. Yeah, yeah, it wasn't yeah. like no, just no, some random stuff that you just want. And you know that you just might want. It was like sugar. It was, I mean, it was <laughs> essential stuff. And yeah, everything needed. in that cart, it looked like he was about to go home and make a meal. Oh, yeah. With exactly that. You know what I'm saying? And so I was like, I paid it. He was like, oh, my God, I, I appreciate you. Oh, my God, you are a blessing. I was like, it's okay, it's okay. I didn't mm -hmm. have people be there for me. Mm -hmm. So, it I, again, I had no idea. He could have had a $100 worth of stuff. And, and on, on that counter in the back, and I, would, and I wouldn't even know, but I was like, okay, I just got paid, my bills is paid, my bills already paid, and God is continually blessing me, I'm not rich, I'm not rich by far, I, 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 I could use a little extra help every now and then, mm -hmm. but I knew at that time that Whatever he had on that counter, it couldn't have been no thousands of dollars. So I knew that I could afford to take care of it for him. And I didn't have that happen to me before where you be in a line and you accidentally <laughs> forget your money at home or your car don't work. And somebody be like, I got her stuff. I got her stuff. 
so I just did it just on the whim. And I was like, that was the first time I ever. Right across the street from the store. We, I did it. Girl. Couple, not a couple, but before. I but see, I've done it before, yeah. like, where you know exactly what you're paying. Like, say you heard, okay, that'll be eight ninety nine. Oh, I'm short a couple of dollars. And I'll be like, hey, here. Just, here's a couple of dollars. I didn't done that oh, before. Oh, but to totally say <laughs> I'm paying his bill and I had no idea how much the bill was. <laughs> I was like, Lord Jesus, after a while, I thought about it. I'm like, oh, shoot. I wonder how much his bill is. It, it hit me after the fact. But then when I did, when it was all said and done, it was only like $18. It wasn't even a $20 bill. And I was like, oh, you know, I'm thinking in my head, oh, regardless what it was, I would have paid it. Even if it was 20 40 60 80 I was going to pay it. And yeah. it was just, I was like, this, you never know. That that man, that might have been that meal that he absolutely needed to take tonight. Yeah. So, yeah. <clears throat> but, um. But, yeah, so, uh. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm trying to catch up on the. I'm trying to catch up on the comments. <laughs> Oh, one time I went to lunch with these people and I mm-hmm. took the Walmart card out. But I wasn't thinking that because you only use it at Walmart. Right. But I, I, was, I just thought it was my regular. It was like a gift card or something? No, it's the Walmart, the credit card. Oh, oh, uh, oh yeah, that's right. Yeah, that Walmart. Like Target, Walmart, yeah. Yeah, so I ain't thinking I gave it to the, the man and he went and he came back. So he passing everybody's out, but mine, and he walks up to me. He was like, your card was a client. I was like, what? So I was like, ah, oh, because I just paid, you know. I was like, I just paid them, and a little girl. Why was You're it not that, in the uh, camera? Also, I looked, and it was it was my Walmart card. <laughs> so you was trying to pay your bill. Well, I, I thought it was card. my regular debit <laughs> card because it was right. You know, they right, them two. <laughs> I was like, what the? Who just got paid on this card? Uh, so I'm like, oh my goodness, my money. When I looked at it though, <laughs> mm-hmm. I just started laughing. And it was the first time, of course, I went out to lunch with this group of people. But mm-hmm. one thing I can say is, one of the ladies, she was reading her, she's like, oh, you can use my card. And then I was like, no, I got it. So I had to take the right card, my debit card, actually out and give it to him. But instead of that card, it was just, they were just right there together. That's what happened. Mm-hmm. But one lady did say, she was like, no, you can use my card. So after I, everything I paid for, and, you know, we squared away whatever. I turned around and I told her, thank you. I said, well, girl, if I knew you was going to volunteer now, I'd have ordered up some more stuff. I know, that's right. <laughs> she was, she, I, I was, I was, but you know, at that time, I wasn't embarrassed, though, because I was just like. Because I've been embarrassed. I remember going to the store and just, just totally didn't have nothing on me. I'm like, I forgot my wallet. I'm driving without no license, without no credit cards, without no cash. And I'm in the lane, and somebody said, I got you. I got you. I was like, oh, my God. I, I was so embarrassed because I'm like, could you just leave this stuff in these sacks? Have you ever had that happen before? You know, like, just leave the stuff right there. I promise I'm coming right back. I'm going home. I'm going to get my wallet, and I'm coming. Don't put my stuff back on the shelf. Because <laughs> then you got to go back to the right store. The from yeah. There, you know? So and when I did it that day, I said I'd be right back. Don't and I say I said I said don't put it back. Just leave it right here. Like, right. And I'm driving. I'm gonna drive right there, and I'm gonna come right back. Get back in there. She gonna say, Oh, I just, I just, you put it right as soon as I left, cause I'm only going. I probably could have ran across the street. Uh huh. Yep. But yep. I was just like, <laughs> so yeah. Be like. But um, that's that's basically what uh, that's what happens sometimes, and you just. You just go ahead and, you know, if, if you can, you can. If you can't, you can't. Not saying we got to be Captain Saver for every person that we see, you know. And that's the thing. You don't want to ever feel like you got to be Captain Saver for every, you know, particular thing. Because if you can't do it, if you don't have it, then don't just be like, I can't. Okay. Just be like, I can't. Sorry. You can't do it. So, a lot of people say when it comes to supporting your family and friends, if you if you can't go without it, then do not 
loan out money or give out money or anything like that if you can't do without it. But again, it's like, what do you do? You know, sometimes you just feel sorry for people. Sometimes you just feel sorry for people and you just feel compelled to help. And if they burn you once, then you just know. Next time they need help, you can't. I'm sorry. I don't know what to tell you. I'm sorry. I don't know what to tell you. But anyway, hold on one second. Well, okay, everybody, we don't been on here for almost two hours discussing supporting family and friends or being the one on the receiving end of, you know, mm -hmm. of family or friends. We want to thank everybody who tuned in tonight for our live review on this topic. Again, you guys, um, make sure you definitely subscribe and also hit the notification bell so you can get all of our future notifications. And also, please make sure that you give us a thumbs up on this video. Thumbs up. Please, we need likes. We need likes. We need likes. So make sure you give us a like on this video. We really, really, really do appreciate it. And our channel is very new. This is only our second video. So we know that in time... We will get more subscribers. We'll get more viewers. But in the meantime and in between time, we do appreciate everybody <laughs> who is supporting us on this channel. Thank you. Um, thank you very kindly. <laughs> <laughs> Good night. Good night. <laughs>